Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial where well, I want to have a look at some of the tutorials and videos that are available from someone called James Patterson. Now I would imagine most people will look for videos and tutorials on like YouTube and maybe Vimto um, and probably not go much beyond that. Now as far as I can tell James Patterson doesn't put videos onto YouTube but I could be wrong but he does do sort of articles for magazines that is his job he is a writer for photography magazines and maybe other magazines as well and as you can see that he does digital camera magazine photo plus the Canon magazine N photo the Nikon magazine and also for this website digital camera world now he does mainly Photoshop tutorials but he does do the occasional Photoshop uh, Affinity Photo tutorials as well and in this I will link this page in the description to this video um, and as you can see he has all these videos and tutorials down here like I said there's not just um, Photoshop ones there are like this cheat sheet for doing photography and Photoshop here and then a bit further down here there should be a couple of affinity photo ones making striking double exposures and this one here for intricate selections and if I scroll right down to the bottom there's like seven pages of tutorials so you can go through them all and see if there's any affinity photo ones that you want to try or even have a look at some of the Photoshop ones and maybe try and adapt them for Affinity Photo. So there's another one here for doing drop the subjects into a new scene. But the one I want to look at is this one here, which is create a retro postcard easily in Affinity Photo with our free start images. So if I have a click on that it will open up this page where there is a video tutorial here and there's also the written tutorial let me just close that uh, the written tutorial part of it down here so you can do it either by the video or by the written tutorial whichever you prefer now I have sort of I didn't follow the, his tutorial, I just messed about with it in my own way which is a good way for beginners to learn is to sort of just have a mess around and see what you can do. Um, if I come back to here part of this tutorial is that you can download the free images to make the camera um, postcard tutorial and when it downloads it will be a zip file and once you unzip it you will get a file called PP183 now I think this is from when he used to write for I think it's practical photography and it's probably issue 183 and if you open it up you will get um, three different sets of images one for the affinity tutorial that we have mentioned the camera and then we have some tech the postcard and some textures so I'm not going to sort of go into them because they are already covered in his written or video tutorial that you can get online but I want to come back to these other two files one for Lightroom and one for Photoshop now he's obviously in this practical photography magazine he has sort of done free tutorials for that issue but that doesn't mean that we can't use those in Affinity Photo because if we have a look at the Lightroom file there are five images of the same picture of the Avebury stones and they're all done in different exposures so this means that you can now have a sort of a 
practice with the photo merge options uh, HDR merge options I should say in Affinity Photo so I'm just going to do that let me just close this down so you come to file and new HDR merge and then once you have this dialog here you just need to find those images and if I come to here and Lightroom so it's just a case of I hold down the control key while I click on all of those and click open and they will be installed into this dialog box and then you can just click OK and wait for Affinity Photo to do its thing so it's just merging these different exposures to give you the best sort of image from like the, the darks and the light areas of the image so if you've never taken a sort of a bracketed set of images this is a good way that you can practice what would happen and what effects you can get now obviously I'm not going to go greatly in depth to what you can get here but once you have finished like the installing and the merging Affinity Photo will give you some options down here and you can click on these options and just check out which ones that you like the look of um, I believe there's also yeah, you can also get some other options from this menu here um, we've got crazy what we've got here so you can see you've got much more detailed images so you can try out some different things that way let me come back to the default options and we'll just have a look at this high black and white one here so you can make some alterations here on the right if you want to sort of just tinker with the basic default settings and alter things that way which I'm, I'm not going to bother to do that's something you can do in your own time because this is the, the point of this video is to get you to sort of experiment try things the best way to learn affinity photo or any photo editing program is just to have a tinker around and try it so once you're happy you just click apply and this will be brought into the photo persona in affinity photo and you can then sort of carry on making adjustments and edit it however you want so that is the Lightroom files that you get for free in this download and in the Photoshop one there's just one file and it's called grading before so if I click on this and open this this is a sort of an infrared image and as, as it's called grading before I'm guessing the Photoshop tutorial is about grading it in some way either using a gradient or some other option um, but a simple edit you could do is just add a levels adjustment and just tinker with the settings to get a sort of a much better image in, or in my opinion a much better image from the start image so that was the start image and that is just with the levels adjustment but like I said this the whole point of these sort of files that you can download for free is that you can just have a bit of fun experiment try different adjustments see what works and what doesn't work without any ruining sort of any any of your own pictures or sort of doesn't really matter what you do and what what your results you end up with just practice and try out different things so basically that is it really I would advise sort of looking at James Patterson's selection let's have a look at page two see what's on page two 
what have we got here? See if there's any affinity photo ones. Look, magnificent motion blur effect to add a sense of speed in affinity photo. So there's one I've not looked at myself yet. Um, so don't just stick to YouTube or you know other places like that. There are sort of written tutorials and other places to find ways to sort of get the best out of Affinity Photo. So really that is the end of this two video. So thank you for watching and goodbye.